Hello and welcome to the program. I am DG Badimosi. The level of borrowing by the federal government has taken dynamic turns in recent years. With the COVID-19 pandemic, low oil prices and consequent drastic drop in revenue, the government has had to take tough economic decisions, including borrowing more to fund the budget and also meet other obligations. Currently, Nigeria's total public debt, that is domestic and external, as of December the 31st, 2020, stands at 32.9 trillion naira. Now, contrary to what many people may think, this debt is not completely owed by the federal government. It's a sum total of monies owed by the federal and state governments. Of the total public debt stock, states in the country and the federal capital territory account for about 6 trillion naira. So we're left with around 26.9 trillion which is what the federal government alone owes. But it's also important to state here that there are also individuals and companies that, are, that equally owe the government. So right now, our standing funds and debt worth up to 5.2 trillion naira belonging to the federal government is being tied up in the hands of several debtors. The Ministry of Finance is hoping that through the second phase of its project Lighthouse, it will be able to recover the debts. Meanwhile, on the sub-national level, Lagos, Rivers, and Aquibom are the states with the highest debt stock. On the flip side, though, states that make up the top 10 with least internally generated revenue like Jigawa and Ikiti are also carrying huge debt burdens. Well, let's take a lesson now to the Minister of Finance, Zainab Ahmed, speak on the issue of Nigeria's debt burden recently. There is a lot of sensitivity in Nigeria about the level of borrowing by the government, and it's not misplaced. And I said earlier on that the level of borrowing is not unreasonable, it's not high. The problem we have is that of revenue. So what we need to do is to increase our revenues to be able to enhance our debt service obligation capacity. If we say we will not borrow, and therefore we will not build rails and uh, major infrastructure until our revenue rises enough, then we will regress as a country, we will be left behind, we won't be able to improve our business environment and our economy will not grow. So it's a decision that every government has to take. And our assessment is that we need to borrow to build out major infrastructure. We just need to make sure that when we borrow, and we have, the president has ensured that we're doing that, that when we borrow, we're applying the borrowing to specific major infrastructure that will enhance the business environment in this country. Again, we all have to work, not just federal government, but state governments to increase our revenue to enhance our debt service obligations. And we also have to make sure that when we're choosing the projects, we're choosing carefully the ones that will enhance business environment so that more revenue yields comes into the, the, the treasuries of the country. Well, that's the Minister of Finance, uh, Budget and National Planning, speaking on uh, Nigeria's debt situation there. Joining me now on the program to discuss this further is Johnson Chuku, who is uh, the Managing Director and CEO of Kari Asset Management. He's an investment banker based in Lagos. Thank you very much, Mr. Chuku, for joining us on the program. You listen to the Finance Minister there. What, what would be your reaction to what uh, she said? Thank you, boss. Uh, thank you, Deji. Um, thank you, Deji. Uh, the truth is that uh, there's some element of truth in what she said, that our problem is not just uh, the, core, the core problem Nigeria has is revenue problem. Uh, if you look at last year, I mean 2020, uh, total uh, federal government collected revenue was 3.4 trillion naira at the end of November. Hmm. Well, as um, uh, if you, the budget was more than uh, 5.8 7 trillion, and this year, uh, if you look at the budget that we have cut about more than 10 trillion, and you look at the revenue projections, so and uh, you look at the expenditure projections, you realize that the problem we have is core. The problem is largely a revenue uh, issue but i have a, a different opinion as it comes to the solution to this revenue challenge mm. uh, and for me the solution is not for government to continue accumulating debt because debt service to revenue is a major great a major challenge in the country 2020 total government uh, debt service as of november was 3.1 trillion naira total government revenue as of november was 3.4 trillion naira 
which meant that virtually all the federal government revenue went into debt service. Debt service, yeah. And that is getting to a point where you can say debt service is getting unsustainable. And now that does not include the ways and means borrowing of the federal government, which uh, by all accounts is, is, said, is expected to be about 13 trillion naira, which when you now bring it into a, an interest bearing debt, there is certainly the federal government, the public sector debt will not just be 13.9 uh, um, trillion, we should be talking of something like 25. So, so what uh, option has the government got? So my, my approach is that the government has to review its method of funding infrastructure. A lot of, today we don't have any infrastructure spend that is coming from government revenue. So all amount that the government is spending on infrastructure is coming from borrowing. Well, and unfortunately, government is not the most efficient uh, economic manager or financial manager. So you realize that a lot of wastes are involved in when government in government procurement. If the infrastructure with the minister is talking about is going to be funded from debt, it can as well be funded from by private sector. Because when you borrow, but, you but, have but to pay let's back. face it, is this private private sector fund fund now? Do you think it is out there? Do you think the kind of funds that you would need to fund some of these uh, uh, projects? Do you think those funds are out there? Can, can it be accessed from the the private sector? Yes, uh, but let me, let me remind you, Deji, uh, how much is Dangote using to build uh, 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 it's his, um, his uh, refinery? I understand it's in the neighborhood of more than $12 billion or $11 billion. And that was borrowed, largely borrowed. So similarly, if the federal government wanted to build, build that refinery, the government would have borrowed that amount or even more because the government the lot of uh, layers of wastages when the government is involved in procurement. So my, my take is that the government could have said they didn't want to uh, a private sector to build a refinery, wanted to build a refinery, and maybe we'll be talking about twenty billion naira borrowing, twenty billion dollar borrowing. Again, the urgency to complete it and begin to earn revenue won't be there. The reality is that if you have good projects, the funding is ad available, if not locally or internationally. And there is no viable economic project uh, that has not found funding in the world. It is basically who is the promoter of that uh, uh, project, what is the sovereign risk of the country where that project is located, what is the commercial viability of that project, is there a market for the product coming from that production. Once you uh, tick all these uh, aspects, then you're going to get funding from either local or foreign investors. Uh, and in the, the case of Nigeria, would you, would you say Nigeria ticks all these aspects? to fund infrastructure, and we have a lot of waste in those borrowing. And then the infrastructure the government is spending on are not commercially viable. In a lot of instances, there are a lot of padding in those costs of those infrastructure that will make them impossible for those projects to pay back the cash borrowed for them. So the approach is not to continue to borrow, is to earmark some commercially viable projects and raise money from the, uh, uh, concession those projects to the private sector and have private sector build those projects on that BOT, or that is built on operate and transfer, and ultimately transfer them back to the sector at the expiration of the uh, concession figure. All right, Mr. Johnson Chuku, thank you very much for your time, and thank you very much for joining us on the program. My pleasure. I will take a short break, and we'll be right back. Opinions are free, facts are sacred, the truth is universal. How in practical terms? Can we, for instance, de-escalate the tension? The president must see himself as the president of the federal republic. We know where the enemy is. Three places. Um, the Lake Chad basin, the border area between Nigeria and Cameroon, and then the Sambisa forest. On DG 360, we give you a complete dose of everything. Opinion, facts, and undiluted truths. I hardly believe what politicians are saying in this uh, part of the world. A new Nigeria is possible, a future is possible. We delve into the issues, dissect it so that you can understand it, use it to take action. I don't think there's any need for any governor to look for grant for ranching. DG360, dissecting the issues.